Hello. See some familiar faces. Um, so nice to meet everyone. If I have not met you, my name is Lisa Hall, um, and I'm going to be talking about the future of your security team, of your security team. And I'm going to be pushing buttons to move my slides. All right. So who am I? Um, I most recently was CISO at Color Health, and prior to that, uh, headed security at Pager Duty for a little over three years. Uh, this slide is correct. I got into security by being the executive assistant to a CISO a long time ago. And I was like, this is cool. I need to learn this. Uh, so then learned some things uh, and was an analyst and then manager and kind of took the management track. Um, but yeah, I do not lie. That is my LinkedIn. You um, please add me chat if you'd like. I am available. So there's a few topics I'm going to hit on today about the future of your security team. One is just this idea of lean teams, which I felt like was pretty timely with um, some reduction in force. Um, I also have been doing the startup thing for a bunch of years. So a lot of times that's the lean teams. And then I come in and I'm like, we need to build this team and these programs. And then uh, security scope creep, but like not the bad scope creep, uh, how security is kind of getting our hands in a little bit of everything and how that's a good thing. And then security as a business enabler, uh, I think uh, I'll get into the slide, but we're going to be viewed more and more as like a positive security force as opposed to the security police. All right. So lean teams. This is my uh, self-made graphic of a lean team. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why you would have a lean team. Again, part of this is because a lot of companies we see in the news and on LinkedIn, they're um, you know reducing force. So you may have had a team of like four people working with you and now it's like you. Uh, <laughs> also balancing roles and specialties. So it's really difficult with a small team to have someone who's super specialized uh, because you kind of have to do all the things. Uh, so finding that balance between breadth and depth, they like to call it. Uh, and then also early career versus more experienced. So what I found is um, like having the experience of actually building teams a few times over, uh, there's a sweet spot for bringing in um, more junior folks or early career folks, as opposed to people who are you know, further along in their career. And it's great opportunity to have mentoring that way, because you've got someone who is kind of can teach the other person to do it. Um, but with, with looking at lean teams, I think what the direction we are going to go is having security be of course, this isn't every company. There are very large companies who have very specific uh, security-centric specialties, but the traditional trajectory of like, I'm only going to focus on this one thing and that's my jam, I think that's going to fade away a little bit as the lines between what security does gets blurry. And so we all will have to be sort of in the back of our mind, these general practitioners, and we'll have to understand what our developers are talking about when they're building this thing in Kubernetes. And um, I don't know what our IT team is doing with SSO and why our customers care about FedRAMP or whatever they're asking us for that we'll have next month. No, <laughs> you're like, I'm on it. <laughs> Let's get it. Um, so those are kind of the balances. And what I found is Working with a lean team, you can, um, you don't just have to, we actually had a talk earlier on this about harnessing developers and really like partnering with other teams across the company to kind of turn them like secretly into security people. <laughs> You're like, you will love us and you will now be security. Uh, so really getting those champions across the company who can be your security voice. And then when the time is right, um, as I may or may not have done in the past, actually bring them over to your security team. Um, so you are now a security person, uh, which I think is great. It's also a good way for someone to transition, transition into security. So if you're looking or if you're hiring, uh, I think that's something to keep in mind is just what is the size of the company and should I be presenting myself or learning something new because we're in AWS and maybe I should do like an AWS certification so I can understand what the other team members are doing in the other orgs. All right, the second part of this is, <laughs> you don't have to be able to read all of these little boxes, but security scope creep. 
the good scope creep. So when we think about security orgs, this is kind of, and this is different, like the boxes can move slightly, but this is the version of what people think. There's like swim lanes and there's strict lines and there's infrastructure security and they do the infrastructure stuff and there's application or product security and they're doing code reviews only and design reviews and they're not doing anything else. And then compliance, they run like maybe SOC 2 and ISO, and maybe they're talking to customers. And um, then you've got IT, and they they just do computer stuff, right? Like they're making sure our laptops are secure. And this is what we imagine. Um, but little do we know over there, and those are just random like companies that people may be thinking about today or recently. Um, they're kind of like, they're coming through and they're hitting all of these areas. Like they can't, you can't just focus on one of those swim lanes there. You have like in security, I need to know about what is this chat GPT thing? And like, maybe this will be relevant. Maybe it's relevant to product and maybe we should be as security practitioners kind of helping out products. Like how should we use it? Or, um, I think copilot is a great example of that. It's like, oh, this could help our developers write code, but should security be also maybe looking at this? So this is like the traditional, almost old school. Um, and this is actually how I build my teams, right? Like generally like reporting structure, I have these, right? But I think in reality, it looks more like this uh, with the beautiful rainbow colors which is like, it's all kind of smushed together and they, things kind of move around and don't quote me on where I put all of the, <laughs> all of the words here, but um, pretty much we're like, Hey, actually product security and infrastructure and GRC are all working on the pen test and like, they're all doing a different part of it. So we have to report this part to so-and-so um, or what else is on here? Oh, on-call security or incident response. Actually legal's involved in that. And so is customer support and maybe marketing or whoever it touches all these other areas. Um, so we can't just operate in our silo and not just the silo of security, like the parts of security, the little structures inside security. We all have to be sharing this beautiful rainbow of security circles. Uh, and I think the more we can do this, the more we can speak to the different parts of the org, the more successful, successful our programs will be. A good example of how this goes wrong is like the bad rep that compliance has, uh, where they're like, ah, the compliance team, they just want like to check this box and do SOC 2 and like they don't know what the heck they're talking about. Uh, where if our GRC team gets more embedded in what the, our developers are doing, they can speak the same language and they can be like, the control says this, but here's kind of what it means for us. Here's the part that doesn't make any sense. Here's the part we actually should be doing because it's going to help you. Like this control exists for a reason. It wasn't just made up for some random business. So this is what I imagine the future being um, a very beautiful rainbow of all of us kind of having at least visibility and knowledge um, around our security programs. And part of it, we may have touched on this in one of our panels, but it really is about being a learner. I think the most successful security practitioners are learners and they care to learn new things. Um, like whatever I was doing in 2007 or a long time ago, even before that, is totally different than it is now. Like I was touring data centers and doing things like that. And now everything moved to AWS. Um, you know, nobody codes in, well, some people code, code in Cobalt still, but most people, most companies are using some other kind of languages <laughs> or new ones or like, hey, let's try this cool, fancy thing. And that's how we progress. Um, so I think it's really important that our new security world looks very much more like this. And then security is a business enabler. This is a lot of text, which I generally hate to do, but I have some ideas on here I didn't want to forget. Uh, this one's a little spicy because security has been known to be kind of like the department of no. And that's why I have that no crossed out. Uh, and it's not to say that we shouldn't say no to things ever. It's just that I think security needs to be more enabling and like help being partners for our business. And you can see this in so many ways. I feel like this discussion could probably go on like a really great interactive panel because if you look at the teams that are responding to RFPs, you can tie that back and say, we spent this much time working with this customer, giving, you know, responding to their security questionnaire. And that led to this deal going through. Like security had direct impact. 
And we are not generally seen as revenue generating. We are generally seen as like this horrible group that's like, we have these really expensive tools <laughs> and we tell you no all the time. But <laughs> um, so this is kind of a new way of thinking about it. And it's also really helpful if you are a security leader um, to have a business case for doing things because you're, instead of saying, well, security, it's working because there isn't an incident or uh, we're not in the news, we're not above the fold, so I get my bonus. <laughs> like, I'm doing a great job. We really have to show where we're actually showing our return on investment. Um, so customer trust, that would be like the RFP, or maybe you're getting on a call with a customer. Uh, maybe you're, you're tracking the time to signature. So before the security team really like created a portal and wrote a white paper, it was taking four weeks to sign a new deal. Once the security team was able to eloquently describe their security practices, that deal is going to close much quicker. And the customer might, might just be like, you guys look really great. I'm going to, this is cool. Sign. Uh, another, another area that, that you can look at is product security. So really focusing on developer experience and how security can partner best with our developers. Um, I kind of put it at the bottom there, but make security the easy choice is just overall how I like to think about this. And again, it's not saying that we can't say no to things, but if people will find a way to do the thing, <laughs> and if we make security the easiest way, they'll probably do it that way. So if we can partner with our developers, creating um, secure ways for them to work, like building up infrastructure that's secure so they don't have to go and like, I don't know, have maintenance and patch it or helping them build some ephemeral images or they're building out Kubernetes. So we give them a security checklist as they're building the infrastructure, then they're not having to go back. And then we seem like the bad guys going like, oop, that was wrong. Uh, we just weren't there when they were, you were asking about it. Uh, so yeah, new services, um, corporate security also. So I think a lot of times security ends up owning things that aren't maybe traditionally security. So for like a good example would be vendor onboarding. Uh, oftentimes our security teams are looking at uh, is the vendor secure? And sometimes we end up owning the entire process as well, which has definitely happened in my past. So we can say if we make it easy for a vendor to come on board it and we have tools that we've that our people actually use, we're not like, oh, guess what? We're going to send you off to this random portal and you're going to have to sign in there and then you have to go directly to Lisa for something. We're going to make it easier but secure for you to onboard a vendor. I think this is especially important in our developing SaaS environment where people are, you know, have the power to just pick tools, download them, use them. Uh, there's less of like the gateway and for good reason, because we want people to be productive, but we want to enable a system for them to actually, you know, get, get some kind of security review so we can feel safe on the security side. Uh, also, if you look at like acquisitions, I put that on there, mergers or acquisitions, like trying to take this out of the security, very security centric world where you, you can have an impact again, going back to ROI on the entire co like corporate company structure just by, you know, participating in a secure way. I don't know if anyone here has been part of mergers and acquisitions or maybe on both sides, um, but it's not a great feeling when you're like, we didn't, we maybe didn't look at this from a security perspective and all of a sudden you're one of us. <laughs> and now we're going to be looking at this after. So part of that actually is building up the, the mechanism to make that happen and, and give people a proper way to review things without being the bottleneck. So those are my overall uh, partnership ideas. And I think this can extend even further um, when we think about what people are building and going back to chat GPT too, or you know, just similar functions. If security is a partner in that, we can really define how people are going to use it and then have more control over it in the end. I told you I spoke fast. <laughs> this is my thank you slide and it's just pictures of my cats has nothing to do with security. <laughs> uh, Banshee and Dexter. And he's just a big floof ball. Uh, so anyways, with these topics, does anyone have any questions or comments? Or do you think uh, it's totally insane that security would be enabling business? <laughs> I 
<laughs> Where is it? This, this one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really easy to get in a silo and think like it's just this thing, but it, there's just so much overlap. This is the best visually way for me to represent that. <laughs> And someone will be like, I'll probably get some message like, that does not belong in that row. <laughs> we do not own this thing. <laughs> yes. I think that that is a great question. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Um, I think part of it comes back to like the, the traditionally old way of doing security when you first like are starting anyways, which is like, what do I focus on? And I've found this just coming into startups over and over again, where it's like, well, we don't really know, or we have one person and they're, they're an AppSec person. So all we've been doing is focusing on AppSec, which is totally cool because we need it, but we've sort of forgotten about all these little other areas. So I think number one, prioritize. I think you and your team and everyone in like, there's so much to do in security. We could all be burnt out whether the team is lean or not because there's like always the next thing. So one of the things I try to do and do for my teams is really prioritize whether that's generally like risk-based. Um, here's the top five things we have to do. We're probably going to do two of them <laughs> or maybe one, maybe just one. <laughs> um, so I think that's part of it. And it's and sometimes there's quick wins where you look at something and you're like, Fuck, I could probably do that. That's going to be a quick win. It's going to make the team feel good. We're going to be re-energized because we've like had this thing. Um, or maybe you're trying to do vulnerability management and you're like, that's going to be a year long thing. Maybe that's, we have to cut that up into little pieces. So we can have some wins. Um, mostly because part, I think of what happens with burnout is we don't have those celebrations. Uh, we're just like, ah, dredging through the same stuff. Like I'm on call again and I'm in an incident and like, this is just never ending or like, oh, these problems, there's 700 vulnerabilities and I tackled 10 of them. And tomorrow there's 800. <laughs> it's like, when will it end? So I think part of it is finding those quick wins, um, and really being able to like find your leaders, uh, to be able to speak and say like, we cannot do everything. We, you know, here's what we think is the most important. Let's get business buy-in and let's all agree we're going to do these two things. Um, I always like to look at it, especially again, coming from startups, which is very much like, I do not have a team of 400. Who can I can throw at a bunch of stuff? That'd be fun though. <laughs> um, it really is being able to get the business to agree on what you're focusing on. Because if you don't have that alignment, then security will be spinning their wheels and they'll be like, we think it's super cool, but nobody else cares. Um, and then it's just sad. Then it gets sad. Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Oh, security is just a hand smacker. Um, and, um, you know, I've experienced firsthand, like, you know, being on multiple sales calls, explaining our security posture and answering all the questionnaires. And then we got SOC 2 compliant and like, crickets. It's amazing. Yeah. And like being able to claim that, like as the team, like own that as security mm -hmm. saying, Hey, we're enabling, you know, because I just really appreciated that. I love that. that. Focus. Oh no. I think it's so important because yeah, we often are just used at like everyone, like there's security's coming. You're like, yup, <laughs> <laughs> it's lunchtime. <laughs> so I, I think it's great. And it, it, it really creates that trust because then we're trusted. And then when we do maybe have that thing that's kind of icky that we want to talk about security-wise, our business partners are like, nah, they're pretty cool. We like what they're doing. We may listen to this one. So at least that's what I try. <laughs> I'm like, ha <laughs> I've got you. MFA <laughs> expires every three minutes. <laughs> 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 I'm not that bad. <laughs> All right. Any so? <laughs> um, so keeping in mind the future of the security team being lean and a mindset shift in the kind of 
talent that you want what advice do you have for those mid career professionals who have traditionally just become you know pigeonholed into like one area of security and you know are really good at it but now the whole mindset is focused towards more cross functional yeah no that's a great question i think it's probably happened to a lot of us where you're like oh i did this thing and now i'm just just that um the first thing there are a lot of free trainings out there. There's some really good, really expensive ones too, if you can get your company to pay for them. Um, but there's some really good free courses. I think ED, um, AWS certification, I think they, I, I believe that their courses are free until you want certification, until you actually want the paper. And it's like, you get to learn the stuff. <laughs> so there's tons of resources. And I think that's a first step is just opening yourself up to those things. And maybe if there's a company you have an eye on, or if you're interviewing and you're hearing the same thing, like, I don't have AWS experience. I don't have AWS experience. I just like, all I know is this on-prem stuff or whatever it is, you know, go research those things and try to at least be fluent in them. Like there's, I am not the smartest person on probably any of those <laughs> squares that I put up there, but I can speak to them and I can make decisions based off of that. And I know exactly who to go get, to like do the thing I need to do. Um, I think part of something else that could help is being involved in the community and finding mentors that like we talked about earlier as well, um, just because they can help kind of direct you in, in the right way. Uh, sometimes it's even internal to the company that you're at. If you're, if you're somewhere, you can make friends with people where maybe the direction you want to go um, and, you know, be mindful of your time, but that's often a good mechanism to kind of dip your toe and get experience in. Um, volunteering is a great way. And then like hype it up on your resume. Be like, I did this thing. Like I learned this thing. And I think those are probably, that's the way I would go about it. As someone who's pivoting from a different industry uh, and interested in security, I'm curious about when you were an EA and you were getting the exposure, um, what steps did you initially take to kind of give you a foundation of security? Was it these like free trainings on AWS? Was it YouTube videos on like security 101? Is there anything specific from like foundation level that you would recommend? Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how much is on YouTube now. I'm like, my daughter finds stuff and I'm like, what? I could learn that on YouTube. How cool. I used to have to read. Um, <laughs> I still like to read, but like not those kind of books anymore. Um, my best advice, or I have a few pieces of advice, like some what I did, but I think what I've seen works really well is find something you want to build, like something interesting. Um, like I have like a Pinterest board. And I was like, I could, there's this thing that I could build. It's like a home, like you just run it yourself. And it's a Pinterest board. It's like, I know what I want to see. I think I can build it. So what I found is like having a goal instead of just like blindly going through trainings and being like, this is not relevant to me. I will probably never use this like in one ear and out the next. So find a, a thing you want to build or do, and that will be relevant to what you're, what, you know, someplace during your interview time or at a company somewhere, um, even if it's not for that particular company. I've hired people who have transitioned careers. I was like, Tad's not here anymore, but this is our... <laughs> he introduced me to someone uh, who is getting out of education and she did like uh, some training courses. And what I loved about talking to her when I was interviewing her was like, she didn't solve, she didn't have like the answers to solve everything at pager duty. <laughs> She's like, uh, I'm new to this, but she had built something for the education system. She was at. She's like, I see a problem at the school that we, that we just do this really shittily and I need to fix it. And so she built this thing to fix that and like went and did the research. And I mean, that, that won me over. I was like, that's so cool. You, you built this, like you went out and learned it. So I knew when I brought her on, that she would just have that heart that she would go and find a thing. And it probably wouldn't be as fun as <laughs> what, she, what she was doing, uh, you know, for, for like her spare time stuff. Um, and for me, I found my people in the company I was at too, where I was like, what, what do you want to see here? Um, so that will help me get to the next step. Uh, and then they helped mentor me kind of figure that out. So any more, any more? Okay. Well, thank you.